Hello friends, Magnet back here with another part of Oxygen Not Included's full walkthrough of the base game. Let's, uh, let's do some stuff this time. So first of all, just a little bit of housekeeping. I am still looking for a water source. Um, I have looked in pretty much every corner of the map. And, uh, actually, no, I'm sorry. I found a water source, not still looking. The water source that I found is here. It's way down in the oil biome. And it is a polluted water vent. So there you go. That's going to be what I take. If I find anything better than that, like a cool slush geyser or something like that, I'll probably switch on to that. But this is good. Um, this puts out water at about 30 C. But it did take me a long time to reveal pretty much all of the map until we finally found it. So there could still be other water sources out here that are better. Anyway, uh, since we've been looking for that for so long, let's take it. So... What we need to do first is we need to get down into this oil biome in order to start extracting what's here. I don't want to breach this abyssalite because the temperature difference between the bottom and the top is really large. I don't want to open up the oil biome to expose it out to the rest of my base and heat things up if I don't have to. So I'm just going to get into the oil biome now and kind of dig around and be able to secure this while building some stuff on top to contain the water that's going to be coming out of here. Uh, we'll just build a pretty simple setup here. So what we need to do first is if we're going to go down to the oil biome, we have to do it with suits. So, since we've been growing reed fibers for a little bit from our little plantation over here, let's go ahead and drop the uh, station to create our suits. I guess I could di disconnect this. So we need an exosuit forge, and we're going to go ahead and get that done. You'll also want to make sure you have a good amount of refined copper uh, to create those out of. So if I need a little bit more, I always can. Um, as soon as we get our water secured, we will have a new way of refining metals shortly after this that I didn't want to do until we had a good amount of water reserves. So uh, we'll get there. Now once you have your exosuit forge done, which as soon as uh, Turner is done building this, we can get those going. In the meantime, we need a couple of other things. At the bottom, when we're going to be entering the oil biome, you'll want to put up a setup to get suits and get a water lock there too. So First of all, uh, I want to keep a good amount of space between here and that uh, water lock so I can put a whole bunch of suits there. I'll probably eventually put a transit tube here too uh, so my duplicates can get back and forth from the bottom of the map more quickly. But we need plastic for that first, so we'll get there. So first off, we need a water lock. Let's go ahead and get that going. And I'll set up a... We always need automation for this so we don't overfill it. Hydro sensor. Then we'll just send something down here. If we have access to salt water, which I think we still do. Yeah, we still do. There's still a line for it. I'll just run this salt water line down. I don't necessarily want to use fresh water if I don't have to. So I'm just going to use the rest of this salt water. Oop, don't want to go that way. <laughs> ah. Almost got it. So yeah, we'll fill that up, we'll get our duplicates uh, working on this, and in the meantime we will start setting up the other stuff above ground, which is just going to be to contain all the water that comes out of here. Ideally, I don't want to be constantly sending water to this, because I don't want to overfill it. I would really mostly just want these tanks to be filled, so that's going to be my aim. Um, and I will uh, set up some automation to only request water from this area if it's actually needed. So somewhere near where the vent is going to be. I'm just going to start setting up another area that is all just to hold some uh, tanks of water. And since it's going to be roughly room temperature water, maybe a little bit warmer than that, I'm not going to worry too much about um, walling any of this off or it being too hot or cold or something like that. If this were salt water or if it were a cool slush geyser, I would not just let the water sit out in the open like this. But since we're having some relatively room temperature water. Um, I'm probably just going to use this space to uh, put that all in. And like usual, I'm just going to let all this stuff fall to the bottom by starting it off with ladders first. So pretty standard method of uh, mining all this stuff out. Let's do this. Um, this is going to be a little bit before my duplicates can get all these things up. Well, actually, let me stop my suits first, and then we can edit some other parts on if we need to. On your suits, uh, you're going to want to do two things. First of all, 
Uh, set your repair Atmo suit task to just be done forever. So if you find any, rather, your suits will eventually wear out because your duplicants will use them too much. If that happens, then uh, this, they'll come back and they'll repair them here and then get them back in circulation. So I'm going to set this up for five uh, suits here because that's pretty much all I can afford with the copper that I have. I don't need a ton right now, but we will eventually need more. But we might want to also wait until we have a better way of refining metal before we do that. Whoops, why am I in shipping? I want to go to stations. So in our stations, um, by the way, once you start hitting the bottom, you're going to probably get a little bit of lead. I'll talk about that in a little bit, but for right now, try to just use any other type of refined metal for these stations. The lead may just get too hot and overheat, but we'll cover that a lot more once we actually get it sent out. There, I think we've got enough. This should be plenty. The other thing we also need for these suits is we need a place that's going to be uh, getting oxygen out of our base and into our suits. So somewhere that you're going to near where you're going to be producing oxygen, you're going to want to just produce or rather put together a small area that just has uh, some pumps and some of these gas reservoirs. So I'm just going to do something like this. I think this will be enough room. So I'm going to put down a couple of gas reservoirs and also put down a couple of gas pumps. You might not necessarily need two right away. So if you want to, you can only get one, but it's it's up to you. I'm fine with two, only because I'm eventually going to need two. Those two pumps are going to need to send out their gas, both in the same pipe, and they're going to need to only send oxygen to these tanks, and then those oxygen is going to be dispersed out to where your suits are. So I'm just going to set up something really quickly here that's really similar to what we did down below with our... Um, uh, ventilation, which is not all the way down there. It's right here. I was like, why am I going all the way to the bottom of the map? So if something is not oxygen, then I want to pump it out. If it is oxygen, I want to let it pass. So, oh, I did this wrong. Let's go this way. There. Now, I probably also want to hook this up in order to. So let's do this, actually. We'll draw it through here first and then through the other side. This is just so that this tank gets filled up uh, last and it empties first so that these kind of work in conjunction as one big tank. So we'll put our gas shut off here and we'll connect it like that. It's just going to steal uh, gas away on the space next to our, our element sensor. And then if we detect something that is not oxygen we want to just uh, send it somewhere else and I will just send it into a separate tank and then vent that tank the ta extra tank is just in case uh, we can't actually vent it we don't want our system to get all blocked up so if we detect something that is not oxygen we're gonna send it down this line and this line is just gonna vent right here we could actually just vent it on a different level rather than right above it if we wanted to so we could just do that Eventually, this won't be as big of a deal once we can get some different uh, vents. You can get this high-pressure gas vent, but we need plastic first, which we haven't talked about yet, so not going to worry about that quite yet. There. Okay, so now we've got all this stuff going. Um, this setup, like I mentioned, is just going to be exclusively for oxygen. We'll set it all up when we get there, but also I don't want these to turn on until I'm ready, so I'm just going to draw a wire into these to not let them turn on until we actually hook it up the way that we want to. All right, how are we doing elsewhere? Okay, this is probably a good time to uh, take a small uh, break here. I'll edit the next part on when we get there, so give my duplicants a second to build all this out. Okay, duplicants have gotten a bunch of work done. Let's get the next part of this. So we need to have their suits delivered. So what I would want to do first is I'm going to set a higher priority on these uh, stations. I'll ask them all just to deliver their suit, and then a duplicate should bring, here it, bring it here in a second. We also need power, and since we're going down in the oil biome, I'm probably going to need a lot of heavier power down here. So for now, we can replace this later, but I'm just going to draw a heavy watt wire all the way back up. Obviously not intersect with wires that are already here, so I need to get this out of the way. There we go. But we're going to need to connect a heavy watt wire all the way up. This is the easiest way to do it for right now. We will probably do this a little bit different later, but if we also have a um, transit tube access here, it's going to take a lot of power also, so having it directly wired to the heavy watt wire makes sense. So, uh, the other thing that we need is we need to start sending oxygen to these stations. Now, 
Our system that we just barely set up is right here, now that it's all done. I still have this only connected to an automation wire and nothing else, meaning that these can't turn on yet. So first thing I need to do is set this to be oxygen, which again, just to review really quick. When it comes out of these pipes, uh, it's gonna head into this detector first. If this detects anything other than oxygen, it'll turn this on and it'll steal it and it'll go down to here and it'll blow it back out into my base. If it is oxygen, it'll just allow it to pass. It'll go into these tanks and then it'll go back down to our uh, setup at the bottom where all of our stations are. Lastly, I'm just going to wire my automation together like that into these pumps. I'm gonna prioritize this a little bit higher because I am making this out of lead which is fine for like automation wires and stuff if you're not worried about them melting. Um, and then I'm gonna set my uh, parameters on this tank really quickly. So I'll just set it to like 80-20. Always a pretty good amount to set on these things. Basically, if the tank is low, it'll ask these things to turn on. If the tank is full, it'll turn them off. So this is just a nice convenient way to send something that you know is for sure oxygen around to the different sources that need it. It'll be like these stations that we talked about that contain our suits. It'll eventually be things like our telescope that'll require us to send oxygen to it. And we'll get all this stuff taken care of. The other thing that we need to do to prep for our water, we're kind of doing both things at the same time, which is a little bit awkward, but the other thing we want to do for our water is start to get this ready and set up some stations to hold the, the polluted water that's going to be pumped out of here. And I really do like the reservoirs only because it's a good way to store things without needing to spend extra power to move it around. Once I spend the power to pump it into the reservoirs, then that's plenty. If I need another row of these, I can always add one. Um, I just carved out extra space in case I really wanted it. But this should be fine for right now. Um, yeah, that's fine. So duplicates are just going to get building on that. This uh, setup down here, we're obviously going to need to crack into... Uh, the oil biome and that's going to take a little bit to get everything built up it's going to take a little bit to send our oxygen down which we can see it flowing now here it comes but here's the idea is these two pumps just continue to send something out because this sensor is detecting oxygen and rather it's it's detecting something that is it's not detecting something that is not oxygen. There we go, the carbon dioxide, ah, uh, proved my point. <laughs> if it detects something else, it'll just go down this side and into this tank and then get blown out into our base again. So this is just a cheap way to make sure that we have our oxygen uh, set up in a way that we know we're getting oxygen there and we're not accidentally pumping something else into these stations that will damage it. So again, let me give my duplicates a little bit of a break, give them some time to get all this stuff set up. As soon as this is filled up and as soon as we have a liquid lock, we'll crack into here and we will start setting up our system to send water back up to our main area. Okay, just about entirely sealed. Duplicants got everything powered up. We have oxygen flowing. Let's start to crack this oil biome open. So uh, what we can do is start to just dig in here like this and build a ladder down. I also like to build a fire pole down so they can get in and out faster. You also want to stay away from some of these pockets of oil for the time being until we have more opened up, by the way, because look at this oil. So this oil is at its natural resting pressure, maybe like 900 kilograms a tile, something like that. This one is tremendously more. If I crack this open, this oil deposit right here, it will back pressure up and maybe flush into here, which I really don't want to do because that may start causing some problems. It could overheat these stations. There's a bunch of things it could do. So I'm going to stay away from it until I have the space opened up around it before I crack it. So we'll start to get in here. I'll prioritize this a little bit higher and we can just build some ladders over there. Uh, probably not through here. Let's go this way. And all we really need to do right now, we'll deal with the oil in a minute. Uh, it'll probably be not the next video, but the one right after is when we're gonna start getting all of our oil set up. We just had to come down here to get our water in the first place. So we wanna come up to where this is, and it looks like we're gonna have to shape this out about like this. Come on, game. You can do it. There you go. We need space for uh, our pump and some automation and stuff like that. Actually, the ladder's probably gonna have to be on... Mm -hmm. <laughs> Misplace this a little bit. Let's do this instead. 
Cancel that. Because we're going to want to build a ladder down here so our duplicates can in, get in there and work on it. This is where the geyser is going to be. We'll see it when we actually dig it out. Then the rest of this is just going to be for our pump and automation and stuff like that. We could have actually come in from the top right here. Um, now that I'm looking at this, it wouldn't have really been all that bad. But it would have heated up a lot of the stuff around here too. Um, and I guess if we were going to be entering the oil biome, we might as well keep the abyssalite intact because that's going to be the best thing that's going to prevent heat transfer in the long run. So yeah, whatever. I guess it doesn't matter too much. We will need space to walk up here. So just a couple of uh, tiles of insulated igneous rock ought to do right here. And we'll also need some tiles. Actually, might have, might be able to just get this away with one. Yeah, we just do one right here. Then we can use that to send our water out of this area. So here we go. Something like that. And our duplicates ought to get on this and hurry up pretty quickly. So this should not take too, too long. In this oil biome, um, eventually we're going to mine all this stuff out. And we will want the material out of here, but it is very hot. So our next points of business after this is going to be getting some better refinement going on. In particular, getting some steel production, which we have not covered quite yet. Then once we get that, we'll have a lot better tools to get in here and uh, deal with some of this stuff. Actually, we will need one more little bit of insulated tile. We'll just do those two. There we go. Alright, I, I lied when I thought my duplicates were going to do this faster because we have to dig through a whole bunch of diamond and that does take a while. So me edit it on as soon as we have all this stuff mined out. Okay, we've unearthed the polluted water vent. It is idle right now, which does mean that it is active technically. Um, it would be dormant if it was not active, so kind of a weird status, but... Let's start to get this all set up. I just want to pump in here, and I would really like to have a piece of automation known as a hydro sensor thrown right here. Um, I will typically like to keep these kind of filled up, especially for the polluted water types, because I don't really want a bunch of polluted gas to be sitting in there. It doesn't matter, it just bothers me, so you don't have to follow that advice if you don't want to. All right, and we'll get this in there. We're gonna need power for this, so I'm just gonna run a wire over here. Actually, this is gonna be another one that we're eventually gonna wanna seal up entirely, so every one that we wanna seal up entirely, we wanna use some conductive wire. And again, just because it's wire, if I'm not expecting it to melt, using lead is totally fine. And since I have a big amount of lead, I can start building all my power lines out of lead if I want to, just because that's very uh, plentiful. And it's not like, the metal ore is something that's really gonna, you're gonna be uh, strapped for if you don't prepare well. So if you can use something else that is more renewable, you might as well. So in this case, I'll just start using lead. I want this to pump out if we are above, say like 200. That'll just make sure that all the tiles up here are filled with polluted water also. The characteristics of the water that comes out of here is water with a tremendous amount of food poisoning. But like we mentioned before, the way that we've set everything up, the sources that we're going to be sending our water to don't care if it has food poisoning in it. So this is going to be like our plants, our sinks, whatever. As long as you don't let your duplicates drink that water, you'll be totally fine and this food poisoning doesn't even matter. So if you've been following along with the rest of the walkthrough, that is definitely what I would recommend. So let's get this hooked up the rest of the way. Um, I'm also going to add another layer of igneous rock here. Looking back on this, I actually kind of wish we would have just come in from this side and then walled everything off, but oh well. We've already come this way. If you're watching this in hindsight, you don't have to come down through the oil biome to get to here if you're playing on this exact map. So yeah, guess we all make mistakes and might as well leave the mistakes in. Okay, then we're just going to have to run all these up to these tanks. And then these tanks out. By the way, I don't care the direction it's coming out of here. I just want anything. I don't need to know if this is full or not, because I'm not really reacting to that anywhere. I'm going to put this on a liquid shutoff at the bottom as it comes out of those tanks. And the reason why is because I only want more water in my system if there is not enough to begin with. So I'm going to take this last tank, um, and this is how I have it set up. 
The way that I have it set up is that this is going to be the last tank to fill and the first tank to empty. So effectively, these all behave like one big tank with this being like the top of the tank, basically. So I'm going to set the numbers on here to, again, about 80-20. Actually, I might want to make this a little bit lower just because it has such a long distance to travel. Let's do like 50-20. And I'm just going to connect a automated wire to go all the way down to that liquid shutoff that I just placed. Which, I'm trying not to draw through anything that's important right now. Here we go. That way, um, whenever the water is getting low, and by getting low I mean like basically needs any more, um, it will ask for water from this system. And this system will just be holding on to a big reserve of backup water. So if we ever do need it, it'll get requested. Uh, like with a lot of our builds, this is probably a good because we've shown the whole setup so far. In the next video, it will be up and running. And the next video is going to come up pretty quick because we're going to start getting into smithing and that kind of stuff. So thanks for watching. I hope this has been helpful. And I will see you in the next one really soon.